Okay, um, in this video, I'm going to introduce the idea of conservative uh, uh, vector or force fields. Um, so a vector field, uh, F, is called uh, conservative if there exists a scalar function or a scalar field phi such that uh, F is the gradient of phi. Uh, so that is the definition of a conservative uh, vector of force field. Then the scalar function phi is called uh, the potential function of the vector field F. Now I'm going to look at uh, two properties uh, uh, that are satisfied by uh, uh, conservative uh, uh, vector fields. And uh, we're going to see these in the form of uh, theorems. The first theorem says that uh, if a vector field F is conservative, then uh, this integral depends only on the endpoints of the curve. Uh, so this integral is uh, the integral for work done um, in moving an object, uh, you know, um, from the one end of the curve C to the other end under the influence of the vector field F. So what this theorem is saying is that uh, if this is our curve C and we move an object from the one point, say P1, to the other point P2, then the work done is only going to be a function of P1 and P2. It will not depend on the shape of the curve. So if we do, we take this as C1 and maybe take this one as C2, then the work done along um, in moving the object along C1 is going to be exactly the same as the work done in moving the curve along C2. So long as the starting point is P1 and the end point is P2. So the other way of um, uh, putting this is that uh, in um, the you know the work done under the influence of F is independent of path uh, so this is uh, usually called independence of path so it just the work done just depends on the two endpoints so that is the first property the second property says uh, if F is uh, conservative, so first we assume that it is continuously differentiable. Um, you'll see why this is important as we go through the proof. Then, um, then F, um, okay, the property says F is conservative if and only if the curl of F is zero. Now, this phrase in mathematics implies, this phrase in mathematics is actually a double implication phrase. So what it is saying is that um, uh, if F is conservative, um, then the curl of F is going to be equal to zero. So F is conservative implies that the curl of F is zero. <clears throat> so that is the just the one if. Uh, now if, if we've got if and only if, then it means that if the curl of F is zero, then it implies that F is is going to be conservative. So it's a double implication statement. Now notice uh, curl of F being equal to zero is another property uh, called, um, so if the, if, the, if, the, if the curl of F is zero, then F is said to be irrotational. So this is irrotational. So what this uh, um, theorem is saying is that if F is conservative, then it implies that F is irrotational. At the same time, if you tell me that F is irrotational, 
then it implies that f is conservative. In fact, this condition, uh, as we go on with examples, is the criteria we use to test if a function is conservative. All right, so let's get on with uh, the proofs then. So we're going to start with the proof of theorem 1, where we're saying if f is conservative, then the work done uh, in moving an object from one end of uh, the KFC to the other end only depends on the two ends. doesn't depend on the shape of the curve. All right, so what we're going to do here, let's uh, just make a, a sketch of uh, curve C and uh, imagine that the starting point is P1 and the end point is P2. Now, F being conservative, we've already seen, implies that F is the gradient of uh, some um, scalar function, phi. So that is uh, the same as uh, I uh, phi x j phi y plus k phi z, where phi x is the partial derivative with respect to x. So from this, what it means is that the work done, which is the integral of f uh, dot dr, <clears throat> is going to be the same as the integral of i uh, phi x plus j phi y plus k uh, phi z. Then we're going to take the dot product of this with dr. Now dr is going to be i dx plus j dy plus k dz. Okay, now if we do the dot product there, so this thing is going to be phi x dx plus phi y dy plus phi z uh, dz. However, uh, that expression is simply the expression of the differential of phi. Uh, so it's just d phi. So um, that means uh, we can actually write this uh, as the integral of d phi from p1 to p2. Now, integral of d phi is simply going to be phi, so that means we can integrate this straight away. And uh, so, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is simply going to be p, uh, phi at p2 minus phi at p1. And uh, that completes the proof of the theorem. Okay, so that is the first property. The second property says that if uh, the function is uh, conservative, then the function is also irrotational. So um, property number two uh, says... Oh, what we called theorem number two, um, it says uh, if f is conservative, uh, then um, the curl of f is equal to zero and vice versa. So again with this one, we're going to start off um, from the statement that uh, since f is conservative, uh, then we have, um, so since f is conservative, f is going to be the gradient of phi. So f is the gradient of phi. I'm going to use this notation of uh, a vector this time. Then this is going to be phi x, phi y, 
phi z remember phi is a function of x y and z just like uh, f is um, so the kel so kel of f is going to be this uh, 3d or, or 3 by 3 uh, determinant um, y here partial y and uh, partial z here. so here we're simply going to have phi x phi y and phi z because according to this these are the three components of our force field or vector field now uh, this we can work out so if we start with the um the i component of this is going to be partial y of this which is going to give us phi z y take away uh, partial z of this which is going to give us y z it's going to be the uh, x component the y component is going to be this derivative of z um, of partial z of this it's going to be phi x z and then we're going to have partial x of this which is going to be z x and then the uh, z component is going to be partial x of this we're going to have y x and then x y now however since uh, we have uh, the condition that f is continuously differentiable then that means uh, uh, it satisfies the condition that the cross derivatives or the cross partial derivatives of phi are equal what does that mean that means the derivative phi z y is exactly the same as phi y z phi x z is exactly the same as phi z x etc so this is telling us that uh, that's just going to be the zero vector and hence we have it that uh, if uh, the force field is conservative then uh, the force field is going to be irrotational as well all right so that that brings us to the end of that proof uh, just before we come to the end of this video uh, i'm just going to mention um some two um other areas that have got ideas that are similar to uh the idea of a conservative field here the first one is uh, the uh exact odes um so exact ODEs use exactly the same idea as what we have here. Now you're going to remember that uh, an ODE, m dx plus n dy is exact only uh, if m y is equal to n x. Now notice here if if we start off with a force field, and uh, we are in two D here. So if our force field is uh, um, I M plus J N, so in 2D, M and N are functions of X and Y. Now notice what happens if we require the curl of this to be equal to zero. Okay, so partial X, partial Y, partial Z here, M, n zero remember m and n are only functions of x and y y in 2d we require the curl of this to be zero then um for, for the first component this and this is zero and partial z of this is going to be zero because this only depends on x and y so the first one is going to be zero the second one is also going to be zero because uh, uh, partial z of m is 0, m depends on x and y, 
then this on that is zero again. So the only non-zero one is uh, the last one, which is going to be partial uh, x of n. So that's going to be nx. Then partial y of m. Okay. So this is going to be zero or irrotational only if um so that 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 that, that first field is uh, uh irrotational only if nx is equal to m1 which is exactly the condition um for that ode to be exact so th th those two are like um um, that is um, okay. I'm saying the exact ODEs, the concept of exact ODEs is uh, the same concept as uh, that of um, uh, conservative uh, vector fields. Here, another parallel idea in a complex analysis is uh, the idea of analytic functions. Okay. So you're going to re recall that in complex analysis, uh, analytic functions, again, are the only functions which have got the property of independence of path, which uh, we proved here in theorem 1. So here, in vector analysis, we're saying uh, vector fields uh, that have got independence of path are conservative uh, vector fields. So here, analytic functions... And uh, um, and uh, and uh, conservative uh, force fields have got like uh, properties that are pretty much uh, similar. Um, and then, lastly, before we end uh, the video, uh, an example of uh, a force field uh, that uh, is uh, conservative uh, in real life is uh, the gravitational field. Okay, so gravi rotational uh, force field is a uh, uh, conservative um, so gravitational force field is conservative um, what does this mean uh, this means uh, if you um, take an object from the bottom of a uh, uh, of a hill okay suppose you've got a hill like this uh, if you take a, an object from the um, say from the bottom here uh, to the top uh, in a straight line the work done is going to be exactly the same uh, if you uh, go in a, a route that uh, meanders and then all the way to the top so whether you go via this route uh, or this one, um, then the work done is going to be the same uh, because gravity, the gravitational force field is conservative. All right. So that's going to bring us to the end of uh, this video. Uh, thanks for watching. In the next uh, set of videos, we're going to look at uh, some examples uh, and uh, do some calculations of work done under the influence of uh, conservative uh, force fields. Thank you for watching. Hopefully uh, this is useful. Please do not forget, of course, to press the subscribe button and like our videos. And uh, if you've got any questions or comments, uh, please do uh, put them in the comment section below. Thank you.